here is the swing chart, which is entitled I Love You, written by uh, Cole Porter. So as, as everybody knows, Cole, Cole Porter was a songwriter. Not necessarily a big band writer, but he was a songwriter. He, he always wrote songs that were about me, and most of the time they were romantic tunes. So my approach on this is try to keep that original idea that Cole Porter had of nice and smooth. So there's nothing on this that I play that's like over the top or like way like something that's so crazy that doesn't really even fit to me on this tune. And uh, I have some uh, key points on this one. The most important thing on this tune is keeping the swing triplet feel throughout the A tune. So that you don't sound like a Latin drummer on a swing chart and you don't sound like an R&B disco funk drummer on a swing chart. That's very, very simple. Um, the other thing is staying with the bass guitar. That is something that I hear a lot when a, a student will start playing, the bass guitar is going, and it's like two different like bands in two different times. So one thing that I do is I always make the student learn this etude all the way through, because to me this is the hardest one. Learn it all the way through, be able to sing every part, starting with the bass guitar part first and then be able to sing what the trumpets are doing, and then go back and sing what the trombones are doing, and the saxophones. And once that happens, once they sing it to you, especially for teachers that are in here that aren't percussionists, you can't really show you how to do a double pedal over the back behind the whatever, but you can definitely show them what a musical sentence is or what a musical phrase might be. And that's the easiest way to do it. Just sing it to them, have them sing to you. Even if it sounds bad, I, I'm not the best singer in the world, I know that for sure. So I don't want to teach them that it doesn't really matter. It matters that you, that you understand and hear, and up here, what it's supposed to sound like and what you're supposed to play behind it. And the last point before I play it is um, fills versus solos. What's the difference between a fill versus a solo? Well, to me, a solo uh, is really not a fill, and a fill is not a solo. A fill is what you do in, in the space of silence to help the band come into the next phrase. A solo is something that you do throughout the entire chorus, just like a tenor sax or a trumpet solo would do on the form of a chart. So to me, anytime you see the word solo, that doesn't mean go play a thousand and thirty second notes in one beat. It means fill in the space so the band knows where the beat is. So as clear and precise as possible. I have, this, I have this four, these four rules that I, I talk to my students about on any ensemble, whether it's percussion ensemble, marching band, uh, wind ensemble, jazz band, drum set etudes, whatever, I call it the four C's. Clarity, character, consistency, and the biggest one is confidence. So clarity, color, consistency, and confidence. It's very important on this instrument. It's, it's a solo instrument. Every time you play this instrument, it's a solo. And all of you know that are jazz band directors, you count off the band, a one, a two, and you're looking at the drummer like, I hope it works. Right? <laughs> You're not worried about the saxophones because they're all kind of playing the same part. They'll help each other out. you got your leader in the middle of the back. But your drummer, you're like, okay, here we go. And you're looking at him, he's looking at you. I got it, sir. I got it. Right? <laughs> so those are the things you want to do is always build confidence. You know, my high school band director, who is also my cousin, uh, is not a drummer. He never, like, sat on the drums. Well, he did actually sit on the drums at once. But he never, like, showed me how to do something. He always sang the part. He would ask me in front of everybody, go sing the trombone part. I was like, I was too busy going, and he's like, see the saxophone part. I go, oh. <laughs> so that's where I learned it. And my high school band director is Ronnie Rios. So thank you, Ronnie Rios, um, for that. Uh, all right. So without any questions, I'm going to play it. How much time do I have left? Ten minutes. Rocking. This is I Love You by Cole Porter, arranged by Les Pop-Up.
Yes, sir. What sticks are you, are you using, and would you recommend those? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I use innovative percussion sticks. I'd like to thank Eric Johnson and Percussion for endorsing me. I endorse their product. They're great people. And what I use is I use a 9A for big band, and for uh, small band, I use an 8A, which is a little smaller. And I, don't know, I wouldn't normally use this kit for a big band, but uh, since uh, the convention center is so big now, I, I, I kind of went down in size for this. And plus, I'm playing at, at, at another event later this evening. But yeah, I use 9A. <coughs> I do not use nylon tip because it's too bright at the sound. It doesn't match the, the warm sound of the, of the drums. That's just my personal opinion. Yeah. Any other questions? For a student auditioning, would yes. you recommend a kid that size, something bigger? Uh, you know, what would the what would your ideal setup be? Uh, for for a big band setup, I like a 12 inch tom, a 14 inch uh, floor tom, 14 inch snare, and an 18 or 20 inch bass drum. Nothing any bigger than that. Once you go past 20, you're looking into like rock and roll, you're looking into John Bond, which I love it. I mean, like I have a, I have, I have a 16, I have an 18, I have a 20, I have a 24. So when I do rock gigs, I'll take that 24, man, I'll just let it go. Everyone loves it. But it wouldn't work on this music, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. And if you don't have that, if, let's say you're from a, a really, really small town, far away from anything, and, and, and your, your, your budget is whatever, you can use big drums. You just have to tune them a little different. And it'll, it'll work. That's what I had in high school. Even I didn't have anything. I had a big 22 inch bass drum and I just tuned it up and it sounded as close as I could to what I heard. And that's the other thing. Just do a lot of listening. Find, find what you like. Find what your students like. Listen together and talk about it. Like, for instance, for big band wise, I love the way the Lincoln Center Jazz Orchestra plays. He plays on an 18 inch bass drum. Ollie Jackson. So uh, that's, that's the biggest thing. Let your ears guide you to what you want. That's the biggest advice I, I, I mean, I've, given, I've been told and I'd like to get out. Any other questions?